Good day, everybody. This is Kevin Hogan, author of over 20 books that have been translated into over 40 languages all across the world. That includes things like The Psychology of Persuasion, The Science of Influence, uh, Covert Persuasion, and a few other cool books that have happened along the way. Thank you for making them so big. I appreciate that. Uh, today, safety and security. People want safety and security more than anything. People will not tell you these words. They won't say, I want to be safe and secure. They don't say that. But what is safe and secure to your client? to the, your wife, your husband, to the kids, what's safe is the status quo. Do you want to move, guys? No. I lived in Chicago. Huh? Lived in Chicago. It was not a great neighborhood. Not a great neighborhood. Great people lived in the neighborhood. Wonderful people. Loved them very much. To this day, still do. Some of them watch the videos. Hi, guys. How's it going? Ten years we lived in that neighborhood. And then mom remarries, and we move. And so we go to this town, and then we go the next year to that town in a different state, and then to a, this town in a different state. So four high school or uh, four four high schools, four cities, <laughs> four years makes for a really interesting not being rooted. And I really can appreciate people that don't want to move, that they don't want to change jobs, that they don't because you're leaving what's familiar, and there's safety inside of our brain that is here with this neighborhood, with this community, with this company, with this whatever it is, whatever we've been around, the food that we've eaten for 20 years, 30 years, that food is the status quo. And changes from any of these things freak people out terribly. So the fact is, is that people really do want to change. They really do want things that are different. They want things that are better and they want to have better choices. But they often won't do it because they won't feel safe or secure if they go over there. They don't actually know this factually. I hated Iowa, didn't like the other town we lived in in Illinois, but I loved coming to Minnesota. That was great. Lots of great stories there as to why that worked out so well, but all for a different time. The point is, is, is that I wouldn't have got here if I wouldn't have done all of those other moves which were resentment inducing moves when I was younger, right? So people don't want to change because why? Because they don't like change? No, of course. Everybody wants to have something that's better, something that's cooler, something that's nicer. Everybody wants that. But they want safety and security more. So if you're going to help somebody change, so you're going to encourage the kids to move, or you're going to encourage uh, the sales staff to um, put an extra hour every day into cold calls instead of renewal business, or to these kind of changes, right? You're going to ask the girl to go out with you, or you're going to really go on a limb and talk to somebody who's actually connected with somebody else and, and, and ask that person to make, make a change in the life for you. Things like this, just being directly honest, this is the kind of stuff that happens in real life, right? So. The truth is that change is safe, change is secure, and change is charged with positive, cool things attached to it. If I would not have moved from Chicago, I never would have been where I am today in business, in life, any of it, nothing, nothing. Because I would have stayed in the same impoverished area, although be it, well be it, with a lot of people that I was very comfortable with, people that I loved, but I never would have been challenged, never would have been uncomfortable enough to, um, to get up and actually do things like get on stage, write articles for the journal, um, for the high school paper, all that stuff. All those kind of things I would never have done because I was just, I was too comfortable here. And then, but change can be the biggest security that a person can have. So how do you convince another person of that? So we're talking to Bill over here, right? And we, we say, Bill, I got a question for you. Obviously, there's a lot of advantages to selling the way that you've been selling for the last 20 years. What is the drawback of selling the way that you have been selling? Oh, Kev, the problem is, is, is that people aren't buying from print advertising anymore. They're buying from, they're buying online now with Amazon and I've got my Amazon store there and you know, I'm just starting it now and, and I think I'm not gonna be selling so much uh, through the newspapers now. I'll say, that's fine. Okay, so you really wanna put more attention into the online. That really is what you wanna do, yes? Yes, cool. Okay, so what would the advantage of changing be? The advantage is, is that I'd get all of my money concentrated and focused into one specific area. Makes sense. I can argue with that. Um, I can I can make that argument. I can argue that it would 
be good to have not all your eggs in one basket, but one thing is for sure, if you put them all in one basket, you'll find out really fast whether you're gonna succeed or fail. So good enough here. So that's the advantage of change. And then I need that person also to share an optimism for change. So how do you feel? Like if you actually, if, if I sit here and I say, okay, let's 86 this kind of advertising over here for six months. Let's just do this, this pay-per-click or whatever this is. Let's just do this for six months. How do you feel about this? I'm nervous about it, Kev. Okay, you're nervous. What else? I'm kind of excited about it. Okay, what else? I think it probably is going to work. That's what I'm looking for, optimism. Okay, now the person can make a change. Okay, and so now you find out, so what do you want to do, Bill? I'm gonna do it, let's go for it, let's just right now. And this is how you create change away from the status quo in relationships, in business, and again, with the family and everything. You get people to, to point out their dissatisfaction, their pessimism about what's gonna happen if they stay in the status quo. Then you have them point out the advantages of change. Then you have them bring out optimism for the change. And finally, what do you want to do? What's their intention? What are they gonna do? If you stay the course, if they stay the course, they're going to fail and they're going to go off into oblivion and to obscurity and all the other obs out there. So you want people to do something that could make a huge difference in their outcome. At the same time, realizing that they can always return to what was, quote, safe and secure anytime they want. You do this for some period of time, you test it, you find out if it's going to work. And if it doesn't work, then go back to something that was familiar while you plan out your next strategy, right? Simple enough. It's really important that Bill, our friend here, who, we, who just told us that he's pessimistic of the status quo, has a, decided there's lots of advantages to change, that there's optimism for change, and that he's got a positive intention to make the change work. Bill has to feel competent in order to make this real in his head. You have got to make sure that you give Bill the tools to, to be able to make the change and know that he can actually do it. And if you can't make him believe with certainty that he can actually make this change and make it work, he will not change even after expressing all of those key points. So Bill must feel competent. It's your job to make sure that happens. And then the tools here are the person is going to need, Bill's going to have to feel freedom. He's going to have to uh, feel smart. He's going to have to have increased self-esteem about in order to actually make this change happen, he's got to feel better. He's got to feel not only good about the relationship with you, but he's going to have to feel good about the, um, the his choice. He's got to feel smarter for his choice. He has to feel higher self-esteem. I made a choice. I decided to walk away from something that was old and dying, and I decided to go with something that was new, and I don't factually know if it's going to work, but I'm pretty doggone sure that if it can, I can do it. That's what you need to hear from Bill. If you can do these things, then you can cause people to logically and rationally make the best decisions for themselves. You can bring people from their safe and, security, uh, safe and secure status quo and bring them into a new reality where they have a better life, where they might actually reach their dreams and you might just get to play a little role. Cool? I'll see you here next time.